Hey guys, it's me, Teresa Perrin. I just found out that somehow none of the audio recorded on that last video. So sorry, but let's start from the beginning. All right, guys. So Hellbiz is an extremely low float stock, but there's something very shady going on and I'm gonna show you it in this video. And it's stock like stocks like these that I see massive opportunities in and I think this is going to be a Redbox 2.0. Now, if you've been following me, you know that I started alerting people to Redbox to follow it around, well, actually before $2 and um, I had been talking about it for many, many months as something to keep on people's watch list. So anyone that followed me on Twitter knew that Redbox was a gonna eventually take off because it's been something that I've been watching. Now I see something very similar with Hellbiz and if you go back in my videos, I'm not sure if I did a separate video or if it was something that I alerted people to at the end of a video, but I know that we wrote it up once and then they immediately shorted it right back down. Well guys, this time it's taken off and this time there's catalysts and something's really up because the short interest is crazy, like not adding up across the board. Um, the institutional ownership is showing a very low percentage and the insider buying has been through the roof. So something isn't adding up. Plus, Wait till I tell you the float and tell you how many shares that are available to float uh, to short, according to Fintel. Like, I'm telling you, this is a mystery, but it's something that I think that once it gets going, which it started on Friday, it's just, I think it could make massive gains. It is trending on stock twits. And like, if you go to any social media stock platform, people are chatting about hell biz. I mean, even on other tickers. So I think that we are going to see massive moves this week in this ticker. That being said, nothing I say is financial advice. Let's get into it. We're going to do some digging. Okay, guys, in my last video, I had given you a bunch of the DD regarding the business because I not only see this as an opportunity for a potential massive run up and potentially even a squeeze play. Although I'm not sure because it's really hard to tell with the short interest, but it's definitely going to be a hype momentum play. Um, but I also see this as a long-term hold. It's getting late. It's after midnight. And unfortunately, these videos take a lot longer than just the recording time because you have to edit and all that other crap to put it up here. So I'm not going to get as deep, but I am going to tell you that um, a little bit about Hellbiz right now. I'll just read this to you. Hellbiz is a global leader in the micro mobility service. They launched in 2015. They're headquartered in New York City and they offer a fleet of vehicles, including e-scooters, e-bicycles, e-mopeds, all on a convenient user-friendly platform with over 40 licenses in cities around the world. And guys, they are. They're in Australia. They're in Europe, Italy. I mean, Italy's part of Europe, but you know what I'm saying. Um, I mean, they are growing massively. Hellbiz also utilizes a customized proprietary fleet management technology, artificial intelligence, and environmental mapping to optimize operations and business sustainability. Helbus is expanding its urban lifestyle products and service to include live streaming services, food delivery, financial services, and more, all accessible within its mobile app. So guys, they also have a streaming platform, which is um, this news article you see at the top, Italy's BKT series on Helbus Live. So. Um, in Europe, they have a massive streaming uh, platform that does like esports and stuff. This business is growing rapidly. A and with their um, e transportation business, like the bicycles, mopeds, and scooters, they also have a food delivery service out of Italy. So that's just a little bit to touch base. Do some digging. It's worth your time. That I promise you. Now, I want to quickly look at the. Um, float. According to Weeble, it's showing the float at 270.9 thousand free float. Interestingly enough, I'm struggling to find a true free float, 
But guys, this was a D spec, and a lot of times with a D spec, there are warrants and stuff, and lockup periods, and all that good stuff. So I'm wondering if the float is substantially wrong here. Although the largest I could find anywhere was a float of one million. Now, I still think it's extremely small. We would have to go back and look through all the filings, and I'm sorry, I do not have time for that right now. If anybody does and they do the DD, please let me know um, what the actual float of this stock is. I am guessing it is still extremely small. Like I said, a lot of the shares are, 10% of the shares are owned, or more than 10% are owned now by the CEO who did massive inside buying recently. Earnings are coming up on... Um, well, they're expected on the 15th of August. So that would be next Monday. And I would expect that we're going to hear something or, you know, a catalyst or great earnings that's going to make this stock rip. Um, because the amount of inside buying that's gone on has been substantial. So there's definitely something in the works here, guys. Now, Analysts give this a strong buy. There's only one that has done a review on it, but it's a strong buy and the $13 was the price target. Guys, this is trading at, well, 75 cents it closed at on Friday. In the after hours, it went up to um, 82.99 cents. So like 83 cents, right? So, I mean, there's a huge chance that we could easily 10x or even 40x if it were to go to all-time highs our money. If the short interest is like people are spreading rumors on, that 200%, which I'm seeing very conflicting information we're going to get into in a minute, then I easily could see that going past all-time highs. But guys, I don't know if that's accurate, so I don't want people to have unrealistic expectations. So let's just look at the analyst price target for now until we have further information. Um, so, oh, you can't see this, but guys, basically this chart is showing, actually you can at the very bottom, see the red candle and then the big green candle. The big green candle engulfs that red one and this is showing that there's going to be a change and we should see a big move to the upside. This is very bullish when you see this. In addition to that, this week alone, see all these green dots on Weeble? It set off like nine uh, bullish signals. So no bearish, guys. This has very strong, strong bullish signals to it. And if you're curious, you can go check these out or pause this screen and screenshot it to see all the different um, things that were set off as far as indicators that this is a bullish move to the upside, which is why I'm bringing it to you because you don't often see nine come off at once, guys. I mean, that's huge and the momentum in the community is huge. It, I think we're going to have a great week. Now, according to Ortex, this is where things get shady. Their estimated short interest is only 6.48% quite a big difference off from what you know everyone else is spreading around and i'm going to show you where i found it at the end of this video but something's off and then look at the shares on loan 445.57 thousand well according to what we just read there's only 270.9 thousand so either ortex is off with the float or this is 200%. Something's definitely crazy, and I would be willing to bet it has to do with something with a lockup on the D SPAC. Again, guys, I'm not 100% sure, but that's the only thing that I can um, trace it back to what it could possibly be. I mean, we, I think somebody needs to contact Ortex and let them know that there's some discrepancy. Maybe show them these screenshots and ask them. Um, again, it's my daughter's birthday on Monday and tomorrow we're celebrating. So I don't have time to do this this weekend. But it definitely needs to get addressed. If anybody does, I'd appreciate it. Um, all right, guys. I want to just close this by showing you where I see. Oh, it's not in this. So let me bring it up because I did... I did see that there is over 200% on Ameritrade. So one second, I'm going to bring that up and I'm going to show you. Okay, guys, we're going to start with Fintel, which um, the off exchange volume on Friday, they said is 59.25%. 
and they're also claiming that the short interest is only 7%, which again, guys, we need to get to the bottom of that. Um, but the shares available to short guys is 500,000. How can that be? Seriously, how can that be with such a tiny float? It doesn't add up. There's something definitely going on here and it actually makes me excited. Um, the short, the cost to borrow according to Fintel is 60.40%. So they're saying it's a little bit less than Ortex. And again, guys, dark pool trading has been in that 50 to 59% range. And they do not have options on Hellbiz. So these failure to delivers in here, guys, they're failure to delivers because of naked shorting. That's the only way without an option chain that you are going to get failure to delivers. So like I said, there's more to this story and it's looking more bullish to me by the day. Now, tomorrow on any stock, there are no, no shares due because um, of the 4th of July. So just a heads up. And then uh, the failure to delivers would be next due on Tuesday. And that's 8,033. Now, let me show you what TD Ameritrade is saying. Okay, guys, let me draw your attention to the bottom of the screen. If you see the second line from the bottom, the short interest shows 217.81% of the float as of July 15th. So if anyone has time to check through filings, see if there was anything that showed some kind of dilution, but where the CEO is buying, I would find that hard to believe. Unless again, guys, it has something to do with something in the DSPAC. So if anyone wants to do some digging and comment below, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have an excellent rest of your weekend. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe.